I see Stuart's on. Trying to. Got a fancy uh, background uh, deal. That's pretty cool. Yeah, well, that's I'm actually trying to take that off. <laughs> pretty suave, there buddy. All right. <laughs> it's still there. I can still see it. Oh, there it's gone. There you yeah. go. Okay. Yeah. I don't want to distract from my face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> can you all see my turkey feathers in the background? We can. My, yeah. no, my uh 25 year old son took me uh turkey hunting for the first time ever in my life and I shot one shot and got my first bird and I'll never go back. I enjoyed <laughs> it. But you know, I've done there, I've been there and done that, so it's kind of over. Good job. Yeah. He was kind of impressed I shot it with the first shot. Uh -huh. Lewisburg, Jason, you know where Lewisburg is? I've heard of it before. Yeah, I bet you have. <laughs> Cornersville Road, especially. Oh, absolutely. But it wasn't there. It was up toward the uh, north end of the county. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, good morning. This is Commissioner Jackson. I think it's 830. Are we ready to start? Return? I'm good. Okay, okay. Well, again, good, good morning. Today's date is October 27th, 2020. This is the Tennessee Motor Vehicle Legal Report. Um, Chairman uh, Roberts is on with us. Uh, uh, Director uh, Lawrence, uh, we have Attorney Hoffman, Attorney uh, Eric Smith. We have, uh, I believe I saw Jason Dillon on and uh, and Attorney Huffman, uh, I saw Chris Russell, Charles West, Jim Cameron, Carl Kramer, Dan Norton, Jim Gavin. Uh, I see Laura Costin as the host. Uh, Ivan Levy. Um, if I miss him, I see Myra P. Bush. Uh, so with that said and done, uh, we do have our committee present this morning. And again, welcome and Glad to see everyone again. Uh, I guess what we need to do now is we're going to turn it over to the attorneys. Uh, I don't know if Stu's going to cover it or whether Attorney Smith going to cover it. Stuart? Uh, sure. Uh, we got the uh, the committee for us to go through the legal report. Um, if you have any questions, uh, me and uh, Erica Smith will be able to answer them, and I guess we just go through the report. If you have any questions, just let us know. If y'all don't mind, I'll go first. Commissioner Robert? Yes. I'll try to get oh, yeah. mine, streamline it, get mine done, and then everybody else kind of follow in and do the same thing, if that's okay. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Okay. First uh, one is number five. Um, I think maybe we'd be better suited or to add this, but uh, we need to send a letter of explanation, be, you know, to the county clerks association for their dissemination. On that case. Okay. You've got a letter of warning, but I think we need to go a little step further and let the uh, county clerks association know. Okay. Absolutely. I think that would be that's a great idea. Okay, uh, number six, uh, I'm just asking a question. Excuse I me. Apologize. I apologize. Before you move on from five, I had one question on five. Okay. Okay, go ahead, uh, Commissioner Levy. Thank you, sir. Um, it indicated that there was, I think, 15 vehicles for sale on eBay, but they had indicated they'd only, they hadn't sold more than five. Did, did we look to see exactly how many cars they had sold? Because that, 
I, I didn't see any you know evidence or proof of sale or, or any comment on that. The the investigator didn't go as far as to check with the clerk. Um, of course, that's something we can do and bring it back if you need that. But for whatever reason, they they didn't. With this I matter. just found it unlikely that they sold less than five when they had 15 for sale on, on eBay and thought they were within the rules. Hmm. Commissioner Galvin, I, I agree with Ian on this. Uh, I just think that uh, that they were going to continue selling vehicles regardless on eBay, which, which showed uh, my recommendation was a fine. Um, I know you're getting a letter, letter of warning, but uh, how many times do we do a letter of warning? You know, sooner or later, we need to start finding these people. Uh, my recommendation was five hundred dollars. We can I make a suggestion? Or Please, sure. Sure. Um, maybe I could I could recommend that I investigate further. If I find proof of more than five, we do a five hundred dollar civil penalty, and if I do not, we do a letter of warning. Is that all right, Commissioner Gavin? That would be fine. I just uh, when when you read the uh, the paragraph here, it, it just it's it just funny how it reads that he does fifteen, but then he says, "Oh no, we only sold five a year." Okay. You're contradicting, but yeah, we need to investigate that. I guess dig further, but I'm okay with that. But don't forget to send the uh, letter to the uh, clerks association. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, number six. Um, I'm just a question, but does Mississippi uh, brand titles today? And for years, they did not. You know, Mississippi does title Mississippi, requires a little added uh, scrutiny. I, I missed the first part of your question. You, you asked if Mississippi does what? Brand titles today? Do they brand them? I, I don't know. You mean salvage? Salvage? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Um, yes. I, I don't. I don't know. I just saw the title. So, are are you saying that they might not mention that it's salvaged, even though it is? It. That's right. And for years, they did not brand them, and that's where that's a state that they would always take their cars oh. to wash those titles out. I did not know that. Yes. So if so, if they don't, let's say they don't, is that something that the dealer is responsible for here? Comments? They get a good Anybody else? Uh, I'll say something. Uh, that's something that we can look into and uh, get back to you before uh, the end of this meeting, or not the okay. committee meeting, but at least at the end of the commission meeting, because we'll just have to look that up if, if they're still branding titles. But, um, but I understand what you're saying. Sure. Okie doke. Uh, number seven, um, why not both violations at 250 each if licensee has a clean history? Say that again, Commissioner. Just, um, just be go ahead, go ahead. Uh, just, we normally do a $250 civil penalty for a city or a county business license, and we normally do a $500 civil penalty for an expired salesman license. So that's just what, okay. um, how we handle those. Even it's if just it's a first question. Time. It's just a question. So if, if that's what we've that's done, right. we can keep doing it. Right. Okay. Okay. Number nine, uh, <clears throat> moving on to number nine, um, the, um, I believe the car business is regulated by the Alabama Division of Motor Vehicles, not an MVC. That's just a comment. Yeah, that, that's mine. I, I just put the Alabama Motor Vehicle Commission, but we'll get it to the right place. Okay, great. Uh, number 27. Uh, shouldn't there be a penalty for the bird dog fee violation, maybe 250? That's short, Stuart. Can you repeat that question? 
<laughs> shouldn't there be a penalty for the bird dog fee violation, like two hundred fifty dollars? That was on twenty seven. Uh -huh. yeah, that 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 one, Chairman Roberts, made my head hurt. That was a tough case there. But, <laughs> but if, and if there was, uh, if there is a two hundred fifty dollar bird dog fee referral fee, uh, it'll be the first in my career I've ever seen a state issue. <laughs> but you're right; it is it is, a, it is a, a not allowed. Well, it's against our rules, so you know what do we want to start. What do we want to start start setting a precedence of doing? Well, let me let me say that I think that uh, it's it's rampant in our industry. All dealers, most all dealers, I'm aware of pay referral fees. Uh, I mean, now a good time to start pressing. We got to start doing something. Doing nothing isn't working. I agree. Right, this this commission Jackson. Just a quick question to Chairman Roberts. What is a bird dog fee? What is that? <laughs> <laughs> a bird dog fee. I know that question is coming up. It's right behind it's his desk. <laughs> that's uh, that's where you pay someone that has no license. They're outside the business. They bring you a customer, and you pay them two hundred. You know, you pay them some fee uh, for bringing okay. them to you. It could be fifty. It could be a hundred dollars. It could be floor mats. It could be something. I mean, as long as it has value and you give it to them. For referring, uh, that's what the bird dog fee is. Well, if anybody okay. wants to chime in, then do so. This commissioner will chime in on that. My my interpretation is it's not not an unlicensed person receiving the, the proceeds from a referral fee. It can be a licensed uh, salesperson from another dealership as well. Well, it could, it could, but usually they yeah. want to sell their own stuff. Yeah, yeah. But anyway, I've mean, seen that the first off. quote I've heard since I've been on this board. Chairman sure. Roberts, you've well, I, I can say, I can say one thing is the unlicensed activity would be the bird dog fee, but yes, it was it's a bird dog fee activity. Um, but we went with the unlicensed salesperson for the yeah. five hundred. Right. And uh, just, I mean, I don't know when we dive into that, but I think so, at some point we need to uh, start calling that out. But anyway, whatever y'all want to do. On a list okay. to call out. Okay. Are we, are we okay with the civil penalty, Commissioner Jackson? Are we okay with the civil penalty of $500 for unlicensed salesperson? I am. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I think we called this, it out. Is number 28, is this case related to number 15? I believe so. Let me look at. I think that was Eric. I think we had. Yeah, this was it's one where they were connected. Okay. Yes. All right. Just wanted to ask the question. It just seemed like they were related. So anyway. Right. Um, number 32. Um, should a flag be placed in the system? Uh, should the entity decide to seek a license in the future? Uh, can we flag someone who's not licensed? If we can, I don't think we can. Uh, okay. That's the okay. issue. Yeah. Okay. All right. If there's something we can do, we'll definitely do it. But uh, I don't. I don't believe that we can flag somebody who is not actually licensed or in the system. Okay. Uh, number 41, um, why a letter of warning is one merited? This one, um, the issue is that the, it couldn't be proven that there was actually any type of tampering with the odometer uh, or any type of fraud. So I just want to get a letter of warning out there, a strong letter of warning regarding the odometer issue. Um, I know there was some electrical issues and, and stuff with the car. So that was one of the things that I wanted to get out of this is more of a, just a strong letter of warning. 
Okay. Everybody else okay with that? Uh, I think no, uh, Chairman Roberts. We don't hear any more comments. Okay. Well, we'll just uh, go on to the next one. Um, number 52. Um, this appears to be a dealer complaint against a respondent. <clears throat> May, may you know we may want to table discussion of this item and have the motor vehicle rules subcommittee look at the issues surrounding how to make compliant home deliveries. This may very well be a template, but the motor vehicle ought to offer guidance to all licensees on this issue. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, do we have any more comments on this issue? I had that down to uh, Chairman Roberts to question, but you asked, the, you asked the right question that I was going to ask. I well, saw quite a few of that in, in this one. We need, I mean, we're all delivering vehicles to homes, especially during COVID. I really think we need to have some rules that spell out uh, what we can and can't do, and if there needs to be changes to it, let's get in compliance with it so we don't get fined for doing something that's not uh, in our rules. Can you give me, uh, Chairman Roberts, stand? Can you give me an example of what you would think would be a rule, something that would be deviated other than documentation? Well, what if you take uh, paperwork to uh, a customer's house and get them to sign it? Uh, then you eliminate your three day rule of uh, of being able to uh, you would then they would be able to allow uh, to bring the car back. And if you buy it at our stores, you can't bring it back. The final the sale is final when you leave the store. So it has a lot of things that we may need to uh, study and get corrected. Well, I understand a lot of the places like Carvana, they, they establish the fact that the car is purchased at a location, not at the home. And most of the documents are signed. Uh, most documents now online are signed uh, online. Uh, you know, so if the dealerships that are taking patients to the house, now that would uh, give a three-day right of recension. But most online purchases are online now. There, there's a lot, a lot of technology out there that allows that to happen. So. Well, I still think it needs to go to the uh, subcommittee to just study and make sure that we don't have any uh, issues. Can't argue with that at all, but it, it is an evolution of, of, of time and how we're doing business and there, are, it will present problems. There'll be fraud involved. And, there will be. Not child. everybody does. Right. Go ahead. Can I say something also? Um, that is, it's almost the definition of an off-site sale. If they're taking it. <clears throat> and signing the documents at the house, which is a violation of our rules. So yes, that's something that we do need to look at, especially during these times. Very good. Commissioner, yeah, Commissioner Galvin, uh, I just wanna make a quick comment as well. Uh, and we brought up a good point. If you look at all of the cases, three things, things stands out to me. One, there's a lot of COVID-19 on here, mm -hmm. which we never yeah. had before. There's a lot of letter of warnings that we've probably never seen before. And a lot of uh, residents that are out of town, you know, like Ohio, Mississippi, I noticed all three of those things. And now since with the COVID-19, we got to make sure that, you know, we get things right because there's a lot of excuses of dealers, wholesalers, I don't know, used car people using COVID-19 as an excuse, you know, for doing things that they're not, things that they're supposed to be doing. So on that line, I'm with you, Commissioner uh, Chairman Roberts. We need to do something because everything's going that way. And the cases that I've read now is all three of these things are either offline, out of state, or COVID-19. Well, sure. like Chairman Roberts mentioned, uh, Commissioner Gavin, is you know, of course, we're the legal. We're just looking at stuff and, and following regulation. I think the Rules Committee comes into play, and I think there needs to be some suggestions to the Rules Committee on suggestions on how to. Uh, uh, amend and evolve into the new generation of car sales. I agree. This Commissioner, right, Jackson, uh, this Commissioner Jackson, in related to what we just talked about, uh, I think you're right. I saw a lot of those too, uh, uh, Commissioner Gavin. Uh, 
where they were using COVID-19. Uh, but what it, what will the rule committee do about that when you got the federal government and the state government just allowing uh, uh, those uh, news dealerships to use that COVID-19 uh, for whatever reason, whatever protection they're using it for? I mean, what, what kind of rule we're going to be able to come up with to offset what your state is required is allowing them to do? That's just a, a question that I think the rules committee would have to look at all of that. Absolutely. But I don't think we can decide that today. I think that's why right. we send it to them is to help figure this out and come up with right. solutions, whether it's COVID-19 or just the fact that we want to change or deviate from the way we do it now to make it legal. Right. We all need to be compliant. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Sounds great. Yes, I'm refer to the rule committee just for to from review and see what we need to do if there's anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. And uh, okay, on to number 63. Uh, what would a letter of warning say? What actions are they being cautioned not to repeat? Uh, a letter of warning is just to make sure that they're not trying to say certain things to um, the customers or, um, you know, forge customer signatures. But uh, it's mainly just to kind of set out that you need to watch what your salesmen are doing um, because they are, you know, they're trying to get these people approved for credit um, and they need to know that the, that we're watching them and making sure that they're they're compliant. Are you going to spell out what they're not doing or what you think they're not doing? Uh, based on what I've seen in this case, and I think there was another one that was kind of like that. Yes, I mean it's going to be uh, more of uh, watch what you're doing here and be sure that you're you're compliant with everything you need to be doing with the. Uh, credit applications. Sure. Okay. okay. Mr. Gavin, uh, I know it's also, there's a couple other ones that had forged signatures as well. So, Chairman Roberts, you brought up a good point there. All right. Yeah. Let's go to number 77 if there's not any more comments. Um, letter of warning needs to be clarified. Uh, should it go to revenue? You know, it's just a question. Maybe we should offer a respondent to remit the sales tax or face a $500 penalty. Well, um, I mean, we, we could send it to the Department of Revenue, but in, in our rules, they're supposed to, the, the respondent, the dealer is supposed to collect the sales tax and pay the sales tax. They're not supposed to just allow them to put it on the customer. Um, so that's the penalty, that's the violation. Um, you know, referring these, because there's there's not many of these type of complaints that come through, um, but I don't know if Department of Revenue would wanna take this on or like you said, just have them pay the sales tax and, and move on. But that's something that we could talk to Department of Revenue. We've got a really good uh, relationship with them now, and uh, we could discuss that with them. Well, I wish you would. I think it might be uh, a way to remedy this in the future. I don't know uh, if any of yeah. them, but, you know, might be a, a fix. Who knows? Uh, Commissioner Kramer here. Number 67 is a similar deal but with the county. As far as, you know, I, I think this kind of stuff does need to be reported to the county where they don't have a, a, a business license or when they're not doing something right with the, you know, Department of Revenue by not paying sales tax. I, I think we need to uh, share that with the counties or, uh, you know, the state personally. Okay. Um, well, I could just say that what, 
we could Denise and I can discuss it. We can get together and and discuss these issues and um, see what see what we need to do to and who do we need to talk to. Okay. okay, number three. Number one hundred three. Um, Two hundred fifty feels low. Shouldn't it be five hundred? We have been um, looking at the advertising uh, issues, and it looks like. This one I missed that there was a complaint before in 2019. Uh, so yes, I would think that needs to be bumped up to 500. Well, well what, Commissioner Rick, Jackson, what, what number was that, Chairman Roberts? 103. 103. 103. This is Commissioner Norton. I have a comment on that as well. I noticed in uh, the advertisement did not have tax title license disclosure and stock numbers for state where it was pre-owned. But my question would be, of course, everybody, everybody knows that uh, I have an issue with the, the, the fact that the processing fee is not including the price. And that to me, that should be looked at in this particular case as well. Uh, that's the that's, that's a glaring one that uh, uh, that I, I can't seem to get past. So can we look can we look at that? And I mean, to me, that's needs a follow up as well is, is to determine if they are including their price and their uh, the processing fee and their price. Sure. I'm good why we, we seem to always overlook that, and I don't understand why. We're in agreement on that one? Okay. Okay. All right. Next one I've got, I've just got a couple, three or four more. Um, number 106, um, you know, add a letter to the file that person needs to get licensed. If not, civil penalty needs to be higher. He could have been twenty five hundred dollars. Well, it's an unlicensed individual. They they don't have a license. Well, we need to tell them they need to get licensed, and and warn them that the civil penalty could have been higher. No, I can I can definitely include that. I I normally do include that in the cover letter that goes with the consent order, explaining that they have to be licensed. But I can. Definitely start specifying um, and enthusiastically that uh, the civil penalty can be 500 or more per transaction. Is the committee okay with that? Right. Yes. Sounds good to me. Okay. Yeah. Uh, number 126. Um, it just need clarification. Is that 500 for each for a total of 1,000? Oh, I, I'm sorry. It's it's uh, my recommendation is a thousand dollars total civil penalty. Okay. Can we talk talk about that a little bit as far as the the penalty? The penalties on that, um, and this is in I looked that one up as well. It's Tennessee Code fifty five one seven dash one one seven. Basically, not less than one hundred dollars is the fine, and not more than five thousand dollars, and then. Of course, curb stomping is a problem we all we all talk about and deal with. But I mean, uh, on this particular situation, we can, as a commission, seek injunctive relief on an individual that continues to do this. Uh, if, do we ever consider doing such on an individual that re re uh, curb stomping? Can That's you give me an example of what you mean about the injunction? Well, just to basically, it's in order for them to stop cease and desist. They cannot curb stone another vehicle. A letter of warning. I can answer that. Um, we we have not considered doing uh, injunctions on curb stoning yet. Oh, no. uh, but that would be that would go through the uh, attorney general's office. The other ones oh. that actually do the injunctions. We don't. We do not have the authority to do an injunction. We can do a cease and desist in our consent orders, but um, but the injunctions go through the attorney general's office. 
Well, curb stoning is, is a problem that says throughout our industry, not only in the state of Tennessee, but every state and in the union. And, and I'm on another committee nationally that we're, we're trying to battle that. So if there's something we can do, and it's basically affects the consumers, curb stoning is, is not, a, not, not, doesn't do any favors to the consumer. They have no protection. It basically, it, it can impede us, the state of Tennessee from receiving sales tax. So if there's anything we can do as a commission, even going back through the rules committee to whatever we need to do to, um, make it severe for curb stoners we need to apply that uh, it's it's a great injustice to all uh, so if there's anything we can do in the, in the area of curb stoning to visit i just want the commissioner to make a note to the staff to, to know that we we want to empower this to uh, mitigate curb stoning in the state of tennessee sounds good I made a note of that thank you okay on to number 150, um, can we add to the recommendation uh, that the file of the dismissed manager slash salesperson needs to be flagged in case he or she seeks another license? Yeah. Okay. Do we have, do we have the staff question? Do we have the ability to do that? As far as, I mean, can we flag if someone makes application for a license, another dealer, can we flag them? Good question. As long as we've uh, had a license prior, we can flag them. Okay. Okay. Uh, lastly, I have uh, number 151, and uh, it's an obvious factual dispute between the parties. And uh, Stuart, I think you went to great length to uh, communicate the uh, disputes on on, uh, on your write up. Uh, I believe the motor vehicle is the correct venue and has jurisdiction over the issues raised. So I move that we set this for a contested hearing. The second day. Yeah, this Commissioner I agree with that as well. I mean, there's there's plenty of code. It starts out with fifty five seventeen one hundred one. And then I'll just under, I'll underline the 160 that says it's necessary to regulate the license motor vehicle manufacturers. That's in our purview. And, uh, and then you go into code 5517-114. There's direct verbiage in that that says the, uh, the, but the basically the commission can't suspend or revoke the manufacturer's license. So we do, they, it does fall in our scope. Um, so I third that motion. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Commissioner Jackson, do I need to carry that motion? Or, uh... No, I made the motion, and uh, oh, got, you've got a second and a third. Second. All those in favor of the motion, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Any opposed? Uh, ayes. Yeah. Can, can I interrupt? Okay. Um, well, first of all, the way that this works is we have to offer a proposed consent order. And then they either agree or they don't. And if they don't agree, then we can move to a contested hearing. Okay. <clears throat> Commissioner so Jackson, this, if that's what we got to do. Yeah. If that's what we got to do, then let's do that first to make sure we follow the guy. Right. We would have to propose either some type of penalty or something. And then if they don't agree, then it moves to a, to a formal hearing. Stuart, this is Chris Norton. Can we get a copy of the pleadings in this? As far as we just got your, the fact that you responded to, is there copies of pleadings we could read? Mm. Um, the, the whole issue of this is that, you know, the, it's anonymous. We got, you know, you, you don't know. Uh, I'm not right. sure that we could do that. I would have to discuss that with Maria. <clears throat> okay. So, uh, Attorney Huff, when you're saying that we need to, uh, for number 151, we need to uh, suggest a penalty for this infraction? Yes, sir. Okay. Does any any uh, committee members have any, any uh, penalty that we want to, uh, in, you know, Recommend. I'm gonna I'm gonna push that question to Chairman Robert. 
you know, I've I've got too uh, short of time on this commission to uh, to uh, okay. cross this uh, bridge. So if somebody else has more experience than me in how to handle a contested uh, case and uh, put an appropriate fine on it, I wish to speak up. Well, first of all, we have to identify is there a violation of one of the codes? The clo codes are clearly laid out here. I mean, can yeah. we find that they're? <clears throat> I mean, staff, do, do we find there a direct violation of any one of these codes? of the allegations and do we have well, proof we look at this we looked at this uh very extensively um and we did not find uh, any violations and so you're uh -huh. saying that we have to have some offense before we can set it up for a contested hearing You have to find a violation and then decide on whether you want to, what type of penalty that is. And that is a letter of warning all the way up to revocation. Then you can also have a civil penalty from 100 to 5,000 per violation. So that's where you're, you need to know that. Uh, Commissioner Jackson. At this. Okay, uh, Commissioner Jackson, did I hear you correct? That you found you you found where there was no violation of any of the motor vehicles uh, laws there, and if you didn't That's find correct. any violation, how can we how can we assess the penalty? Right. If there's no violation found, then then the the issue has to be closed, or you you know you still can send a letter of warning, or you can send some type of uh, letter out discussing, you know, how you feel, but, um, but if there's no violation, then there's really no penalty or any type of proposed consent order to be sent out. It's usually closed or like I said, there's some type of, uh, you know, documentation that we want to send out that the commission wants to send out to, you know, I guess, reveal their, their feelings about something we could do that, but. But it's we can't just go straight to a formal hearing without some type of finding of a violation of the rules or laws. Stuart, why can't we um, uh, push this to the full commission to decide? Because there's obvious disputes, and it is uh, we're not fact finding now. This that's, that would be improper. We're not deciding anything now. But there's obvious disagreements between the parties. Why would we not put it to the full commission to make a decision on this? Because you can't, you're not at liberty to tell us what's going on between these people. Why would we not? We don't have the pleadings, but well, I've, I mean, laid, I've laid that out. I mean, I agree with Chairman Roberts. This is a, this is important because it looks like this dealer feels like they're um, um, being biased. And, uh, and, and, and I think, you know, part of our mission is to create a level playing field among all. And I think that's what we should do. We should examine this further because this could set a precedence because I'm, I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm an independent, you know, we have acquired some franchises here of late, but I, I can see where it looks like this dealer feels like they're being treated unfairly. And it's our, and I, say, I think it's our, the commission's duty to, to, to investigate, make sure that there's nothing going on here because it, this sets, this could set a precedence. Yeah. I agree. So I again move that we move this to the full commission for a decision on hearing it. I second the motion. I agree. Uh, you, you heard a motion uh, made by Chairman Robert, second by, I believe that was uh, Commission Gavin, uh, that we move this to the full commission to be discussed. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Uh, eyes have it so uh, it'll be moved to the full commission to be discussed. And in the full commission, that's when we will need to decide what will be in a proposed consent order or letter of warning or something. Oh, all right, correct. Okay. That's all for me. That was the last one. And obviously, there's not even more uh, uh, cases to be reviewed. So, anybody else want to bring theirs up? Go ahead.
this is Commissioner Norton. I had I just had a few small ones, nothing significant on a, on case forty five, where we had a dealer uh, who who's in our art looks like a recreational vehicle dealer who's had previously in the history had more than twenty complaints, various things, and then the current one is a complaint that alleges respondent was not willing to fix issues with a boat. So the complaint was referred to Tennessee Fish and Wildlife Commission. Uh, so it looks like to me, uh, this dealer's problem, apparently bad for the public, including the boaters. So uh, I, I think this guy needs to be flagged as a problem and, and, and went on investigation or on renewals. He needs to be looked at and examined very closely. He's certainly a menace to society, it appears. Also, if you know this, anybody has anything, I'll move right on to number 96. Uh, a notice of violation was was issued on 12 6 2020. I don't think we've gotten there just yet, unless I missed something here. Um, and then this this is the another one I would request to follow up on for unlicensed sales activity. And he's already previously in 2019 had another unlicensed salesman activity. So this guy's got a. Um, some issues going on. So I, requ I request a follow up on that as well, please. And uh, number 96 is mine and I know exactly what's going on and I will be having a discussion with the dealer. Okay, good. Good. Okay. Uh, Commissioner, uh, knowing you have any more? Nope, that was it. We covered a pretty broad sweep there, uh, Chairman <laughs> Robert. Well, I didn't mean to steal all the time, but anyway, um, somebody had to bring it up, you know? Way to go. But someone don't have a lot of experience. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm trying to be a fast learner. Okay, you're doing great. You're doing great. Any any other comments? You know, any other concern about any of the report? So, uh, Commissioner Galvin, so something that I, that I like a lot is uh, – I printed out the agreed citation schedule, which shows mm -hmm. all the fines of the violations. To me, that was very helpful. Um, and I don't know if we send this um, citation format to uh, new dealers or, or new licensees, but I think every dealer or wholesaler, or everybody should have one of these. So uh, one way they're not in, in in La La Land when they when they get fined, say so how why. Is it this much? You see what I'm saying? Okay. But uh, to me, this was very helpful to just to see what kind of a uh, violation and offenses, you know, that we're charging, you know, e each case. So, but they know I, it's I, a stiff I, fine. They might not uh, do the crime. So why not uh, email it to all the dealers and uh, used car people? I mean, it's just a good idea. It's, it's good format, and who knows? Someone may say, "Hey, we better not be doing what we're doing." I like that idea. Okay. I don't know how you do it, but I'll leave that up to someone else. Is that, uh, Commissioner Jackson, is that appropriate uh, from the attorneys? Can we do that? Even, like he requested, send it out to email to all the dealers in reference to the different fines, all of the fines. Right. Well, I think once we get, get it approved by the commission, um, oh, okay. to make sure that it's correct, then we will. I'll discuss with Jason and Denise about getting it out. <clears throat> you know, in my dealership, my people, I would give a copy to my finance director, my sales managers. I mean, this is something they need to look at, you know, because, you know, we need to take this thing seriously. And, you know, they're going to find, we're going to find these people. If they're not doing things the right way. Okay. And post it on any the other website as well. Jackson? Website. I who is that? I didn't. Sorry, Commissioner there. Jackson. It was Jason. I was just saying that we could post that uh, agreed citation schedule on the website. Good. That was going to be my question. But you, Jason, uh, you, you read the mind, Jason. <laughs> okay. Oh, wait, Jason. Does anyone have any other uh, concerns on the report? Uh, I'm sure. Both attorneys kept record of what we did this morning, so I kept a few records, but I'm sure I'm sure you guys kept it also when we report to the full commission. Uh, with that said and done, uh, since I don't hear any more concerns or any questions, 
Do I have a motion that we adjourn the legal report? Motion to Do I have a second? second. Okay, second. all those in favor of the adjourning the report say goodbye by saying aye. 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 Uh, Any opposed? I have it so ordered. We'll see you at the next meeting. <laughs> all right, we'll be starting at 9 30, so see you in about uh, 18 minutes. Okay. Dr. Lawrence, do you call the roll? Absolutely. Thank you, Chairman Roberts. Commissioner Lee? Here. Here. Is present. Commissioner Galvin? Here. Is present. Commissioner West? Is, that mm -hmm. Here. Is present. Commissioner Fox? Here. Is present. Commissioner Kramer? Here. Is, is Commissioner Jackson? Here. Is present Commissioner Melton? Here. Here. Is present Com Commissioner Murray? Commissioner Murray? Is absent Commissioner Norton? Here. Is present Commissioner Vaughn? On is absent Commissioner Levy. Here. Is present Commissioner White. Commissioner White is absent Commissioner Evans. Commissioner Evans is absent Commissioner Barker. Here. Is present Commissioner Chobanian. Commissioner Chobanian is absent. Commissioner Chairman Roberts. Here. Is present. Mr. Chairman, you have a quorum. Thank you. Um, I guess the uh, you want to take the meeting notice. Yes, sir. Uh, this meeting. Meetings date, time, and location have been noticed on the Tennessee Motor Vehicle Commission website, including as part of this year's meeting calendar since October 22, 2019. Additionally, the agenda for this month's meeting has been posted on the Tennessee Motor Vehicle Commission's website since October 21, 2020. This meeting has also been noticed on the TN.gov website. Very good. Um... Uh, General Counsel Bush, would you uh, like to give us a statement of necessity? Yes, good morning. Thank you. This is a regularly scheduled meeting of the Tennessee Motor Vehicle Commission, which is taking place by electronic means, utilizing the WebEx teleconference application on Tuesday, October 27, 2020. Notice of this meeting was properly posted to the board's website on October 21, 2020. As there is not a physical forum present, a statement of necessity is read into the record and filed with the Tennessee Secretary of State as required by statute. Pursuant to TCA 844-108-B2, if a physical quorum is not present at the location of a meeting of a governing body, then in order for a quorum of members to participate by electronic or other means of communication, the governing body must make a determination that a necessity exists. That determination must include a recitation of the facts and circumstances on which it was based. Further, TCA 844-108-A3 defines necessity as matters to be considered by the governing body at that meeting require timely action by the body. That physical presence by a quorum of members is not practical within the period of time requiring action, and that participation by a quorum of the members by electronic or other means of communications is necessary. The purpose of this meeting with members attending by teleconference is to address regularly scheduled matters to the board in the most safe manner due to the COVID-19 pandemic. All voting will be conducted by roll call. Thank you. Thank you. Um, everyone was mailed uh, the agenda for today. Uh, do we have a motion to accept it? Mr. Galvin, motion to accept. Mr. Lee, second it. Did you get that, Executive Director Lawrence? The motion and the second? Muted. She's muted. Okay. 
I am so sorry. That's all right. The motion, the motion was made by Commissioner Galvin, seconded by Commissioners Norton and Lee. The motion is to adopt the agenda. Commissioner Levy. Approved. Commissioner West. Approved. Commissioner Melton. Approved. Commissioner Lee. Yes. Commissioner Barker. Commissioner Barker. Commissioner Fox. Yes. Commissioner Fox votes aye. Commissioner Galvin. Aye. Commissioner Galvin votes aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Norton votes aye. Commissioner Jackson. Aye. Commissioner Jackson. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Kramer. Aye. It's I and Chairman Roberts. Aye. Uh, you might check uh, Commissioner Barker. I think his uh, mic was off too. My mic is Commissioner on. Barker. Yes, I, I, I voted aye. My mic is on. It's unmuted. Okay, great. Great. Thank you Just very much. Sure. Um, the agenda is adopted. Okay. We um, need to get approval in the minutes from July uh, 2020 quarterly meeting. What's your pleasure on the minutes? Commissioner Barker moved to approve. Commissioner Fox. second. Okay. Mr. Chairman, we have a motion to adopt the minutes. The motion was made by Commissioner Barker, seconded by Commissioner Melton. Commissioner Levy. Thank you. Will you uh, call the roll? Yes. Commissioner Levy. Yes. That's I, Commissioner West. Yes, I. We keep moving from yes to I, so we're I. Sorry. <laughs> Commissioner Murray. Commissioner Melton. I, Commissioner Chobanian, is absent. Commissioner Lee. I. That's I, Commissioner Parker. I. Commissioner Fox. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Galvin. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Jackson. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Kramer. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Evans. Aye. Votes aye. And Mr. Chairman Roberts. Aye. I believe Commissioner uh, White has joined the call. Sorry, we say again. I believe Commissioner White has joined the call. Commissioner, yes, we, are vote, we are voting to adopt the minutes. Would you like to vote to adopt yes. the minutes? Aye. The, Commissioner White votes aye. Mr. Chairman, your minutes are adopted. Thank you. Uh, next, we... Uh, are on to uh, salesperson and dealer appeals, uh, informal appearances. This will be first time for all of us to do it this way. Uh, who wants to uh, read the uh, rules? I'm sorry, Commissioner Roberts, can you repeat that? Well, who, who we need to read the following appeals consist of individuals and business do, we need, do I need to read that into the record? Um, if we or can have, up. well, if we can have um, the individuals um, state whether or not they're present, and then I'll read an excerpt regarding their conviction. Okay. Um, and okay. then we can do it that way if that's okay. Okay. Is James Michael Arnold uh, present? Yes. Okay. Is Kyle Humphrey? Present. Okay. Scotty Alston. Yes, sir. I'm here. Okay. 
And then a dealer is Mario Mitchell. Are you here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. All right. Thank you, Chairman Robert. Um, if uh, you'll allow me just to read an excerpt before we proceed with Mr. Um, Arnold. In the case of Mr. James Michael Arnold, the relevant document of convictions are for two counts of solicitation of a person under 18 years of age on April 2nd, 2016. From the documents received by the commission, it appears that the applicant received a class B felony and was ordered to eight years of supervised probation. This application may be denied under TCA 5517-14 until July 18, 2029. Okay. Um, Mr. Arnold, would uh, you're here. Would you like to address us and talk about uh, what happened to you? Um, yes, sir. I was. I took a plea deal to, uh, to get this matter resolved. And... Um, I have tried to put it in my past and move on with my life uh, I'm with my wife and kids, and I'm trying to better myself. And, you know, I, I, I didn't fight it in court because I didn't want to, to, like, try to get jail time because I need to be out for my family and everything because what, was, what I was charged with is not what happened. Um, so... I have, you know, like I say, tried to move on with my life. I've been at, working at this uh, dealership for almost four and a half years now, and uh, I have no, no issues. I don't, like I say, I'm under constant uh, surveillance up here. I, I try to live for the community. I go to church every Sunday. Um, I'm just trying to, to have y'all to look for my future, not my past, and help me to try to better my life is what I'm trying to do. I have a passion in the car industry. I enjoy it. Uh, I enjoy working here. Um, everyone that, that I work with knows my situation. Um, nobody has a problem or an issue with me. Um, I, have, I have no enemies. Did you uh, bring anybody with you um, today yeah. to speak yeah. on your behalf? I am the controller here at Tennessee Valley Ford. Okay. Can you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, Mr. Arnold? Yeah, like he said, Mr. Arnold has been working here for about four and a half years. He's been a very exemplary employee. He does anything he's asked to do. He's always here, never had a problem with him. And we knew of this um, situation when we hired him, uh, Michael's not telling that much about the situation, but uh, what he was charged with, like he said, did not happen. Uh, we've never had any kind of problems with him. Uh, it's just, he's just, he's just a, he's a, a great human being. And, uh, you know, like I said, there's never been any problems. We don't feel like that what he was charged with happened. Um, he was just scared. I don't believe he even knew he was going to be put on the uh, sex offender registry when he pled guilty. He he just wanted to get it over with and get it behind him and, and move on. Okay. Well, thank you for your comments. I'm going to open it up to the full commission to, to ask questions and uh, uh, you know, to uh, get to know you all a little bit better. Okay. Commissioner Norton, I have a question. Uh, I see I see what you plead to. What were you, what were you charged with? Uh, solicitation of a minor. And, and what was your plea deal? Uh, I pled guilty just to get this uh, probation instead of any instead of taking it to the to the courts like you know i didn't i didn't have a trial or anything um to take it to court to fight it because you know you know you don't never know you know if they would see my side or just see what what was being told um so i was kind of i took that deal just because i thought well i, I can provide for my family going i've been married to my wife for 19 years and i mean and i have two kids i mean 
it's hard to explain, you know, you don't know me as a person, you, you can't see me, you, you know, all you can do is what you see on paper. But, um, <coughs> one life, you know, a life, if it was really, that situation would not stay with me, you know, uh, and we, we've worked through it and uh, I'm a member of a church, which that makes me know better than anybody else, but I'm just saying, I, I, I do attend church, I do try to do right. I'm just... Good question, Mr. Arnold. How uh, how did the prosecution come to charge you in the first place? I I was talking to a lady on my cell phone, and she was using her daughter's cell phone, and they turned it around like I was talking to the daughter because she was married, and she told her husband found that out. I mean, that's how it happened. Any other questions? Commissioner Norton, I'd like to make a motion to grant him his license. Mr. Commissioner Lee, I'll second. Any further discussion? Executive Director Lawrence, will you call the roll for the vote? You're still muted. No. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. Having mouse issues today. Uh, motion made by Commissioner Norton and seconded by Commissioner Lee is to grant Mr. Arnold a license. Commissioner Levy? Aye. It's aye. Commissioner West? Staines. Staines. Commissioner White? Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Melton? No. Commissioner votes no. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Commissioner Lee votes aye. Commissioner Barker? Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Fox? Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Galvin? Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Norton? Aye. Commissioner Jackson? Aye. It's aye. Commissioner Kramer? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Evans? No. Votes no. Chairman Roberts? Aye. Votes aye. Mr. Chairman, uh, the motion carries. I can't count that quickly. The motion carries. Mr. Arnold, you will be issued a license. Thank you all so much. I very much appreciate that. That means the world to me. Okay, next case for salesman's Chair, license. Chairman Roberts, can yes. I make a comment? Um, yes. When we review these these cases, is there any way that we can see the individuals on screen? That, yeah, that's always helpful. While we're I don't have the answer to that, but maybe uh, Jason or Denise could answer that. The only way we can see them on screen is if they call in and activate their video. I know several people it looks like have called in just using their cell phone. So unless they actually physically activate their video, then no, we can't see them. Well, I agree with uh, Commissioner Galvin. I really would like to see the people. Yes. I, if, if it, if, I don't know if we can legally force them to, but if they can, I would prefer a, a video. Chairman Roberts, this is Maria Bush from Legal. I just want to mention that um, there's no way that we could really legally enforce um, or require them to. And because these individuals are all over the state, uh, I think it might we might run into issues if we were to um, require the video just because some people don't have that capability. Um, so at this time, I think it'd be appropriate to allow the phone to suffice. We can encourage video if um, those listening, if you do have capability to get on video, that would be helpful to the commission and the preference of the commission. However, um, we'll have to allow the phone appearance to suffice at this time. Well, I, 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 would just, I would just recommend when they do come up for the case that the board would recommend, if you have video, please make sure 
you use your video. Absolutely. And realizing they don't have to, and I knew that myself, but I just would rather, if I had a choice, see them on video. Okay. Okay. Next uh, case, uh, uh, Mr. Humphrey, are you available? Okay. Would you uh, like to tell us about yourself and your arrest and what's happened to you? Um, Chairman Roberts, may I give it? Excerpt to the commission before Mr. Humphrey speaks. Okay. Yes. Excuse me. Got to head of myself. It's okay. It's totally fine. We're all trying to figure this virtual realm out. Yes. So. <laughs> um, in the case of Mr. Kyle Humphrey, the document of conviction is for concealment of pre-retail medical products, misbranding drugs, and wrongful use of health information. From the documents received by the commission, it appears that the applicant received two Class C felonies and one Class E felony on June 20th, 2019, and was ordered to two years of imprisonment and three years of supervised probation. This application may be denied under TCA 5517 until June 20th, 2029. Okay. Now you can proceed. Yes. Mr. Humphrey, yes, I'm here. Please address us. Tell us. Uh, tell us about yourself. Yes, uh, yes sir. I, I was actually a, a pharmacist. Um, the and I I had a couple of uh, bad relationships. Um, not making excuse, but it's a it's a complicated story to be honest. But um, it all arose from one of there was a woman that I was involved with. Um, I was actually trying to get out of the relationship, and uh, in doing so, uh, she called the police and um, made some allegations, you know, said that I, I was abusive, et cetera, um, in an effort to stay at my house. But in, in doing so, um, she allowed the police to search my house, and I had some medications at my home. Um, that's where the charge from possession of food to medical supplies arises from. Um, the Wrong for use of health information. I believe that one of the medications had a label on it that um, had some that individual's name on it. Uh, I, I didn't use. I wasn't using anyone's information or anything like that. Um, it, it was in my home. Um, and the misbranding of drugs is actually um, the, the same thing. Um, the label that was on the medication was not the correct label, which results in misbranding. Um, and there's a, there was another charge that. The lady did not read. Um, it was prohibited person in possession of a firearm. Um, I had a permit to carry a, uh, a firearm um, before all of this happened. Um, but anyway, the um, whenever the situation arose and the um, the female that I was with um, went and filed a uh, a complaint with the court in order to stay in my home, um, and I was I was prohibited from possessing a firearm. Um, but whenever the police came to get me, it was actually a year later, um, I had my firearm on me. I always carried it as a pharmacist. Um, I just I felt like, you know, being a pharmacist, you know, having a firearm, it's, you know, it was only for my protection. I wasn't trying to hurt anyone or to threaten anyone like that. Um, but any, anyway, I, the situation is very complicated and it's very hard, difficult to explain in just a matter of a few minutes. Um, i just like to say that you know, my past is not a reflection of who I am. I know that I made mistakes in the past, and I, I'm just trying to move forward from them. Um, I do regret the things that I've done. I, I do think, take responsibility. Uh, Lord knows I, I had to go to jail or prison for a while. Um, terrible. And I, I really just want to move forward with my life and try to put it in the past. Okay. Did you bring anybody with you today to speak on your behalf? Yes, sir, I did. And who is that? Uh, Mr. Dale Lewis. He's the, the director of sales here at White Johnson. Uh, okay. Yes, my name is Dale Lewis. I'm, um, I'm the director of sales for our family dealerships. Also in the room with us, we have our our auto group's uh, COO, Ms. Connie Haynes, and we have the general manager of the Buick GMC store. Our Kyle's office will be, hopefully, um, James Conley. Uh, I've been with this company January be 30 years in some type of managerial role for 25 of those years. And this is the first time I've ever appealed 
a denial of a license. Kyle, I've known his family, his whole life, actually, uh, very well respected family in the community to include um, an uncle who was a sheriff of one of our counties. Uh, every morning at this dealership, I hold a meeting with our COO or dealer principals or general managers or sales managers. And every morning in that meeting, we talk about one of our core values. And every decision that we make is based on those set of core values. And Kyle just represents every one of those. Uh, he is just a fine person. And we think he'll be a valuable part of our team, and our family, and we hope he's granted a license today. Okay. Um, can I, I'm going to start, if y'all don't mind, asking uh, a question. Mr. Humphrey, did you, uh, have you ever been part of uh, Tennessee Pharmacy Recovery Network? Uh, no, sir, I have not been. Uh, it, it finds, I find it kind of uh, interesting that you would give up a pharmacy license to become a salesperson when the pharmacist, as you know, can make anywhere from a hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year according to what area they practice in. So can you speak to that? Do you want to go back to pharmacy or you they disallowed you uh in any of the programs or what? Yes sir. I uh if uh, I actually did not have any kind of a substance abuse problem. Um the medications that I had at my home uh, they weren't they weren't the kind of medications that you would, you know, you would use to get high, et cetera. Um, most of them were blood pressure pills, things like that. Um, I, I, as far as your answer of my pharmacy license, um, I did lose my license in my home state of Kentucky, uh, which resulted in you know me not being allowed to be a pharmacist for a period of time. I believe it was four years. Um, but it, you know, with everything that's happened and everything that I've been through. Um, you know, I, I am glad that I you know, went to school and I have an education to be a pharmacist, but I'm just not sure what I would like to pursue in the future. Um, you know, I probably would like to get my license back, but I really just want to move on. Um, you know, this is not a part of my life that I'm proud of. I mean, it's been very hard. Uh, I've been through a lot, me and my family. Um, not saying that I wouldn't go back to being a pharmacist, but I just feel like at this time uh, I'd like to move on and try to better myself in a different area and pursue a different career. Um, just due to all the stuff. I heard, some, uh, I heard somebody talking in the background. Is that uh, a question or is that background noise? I think that was the intercom at the dealership, sir. Okay. Um, okay, I'm going to open it up at this time for the full commission to ask questions. Yes, Mr. Mr. Lee. I'd, I'd just like to ask, is there a dollar value of the, the drugs that you had at your home? And is that a typical process? It would think it would lead me to believe if I was buying a pharmacy, I would be buying it probably with the stock already there. Um, why, why did you have those drugs apparently or medical products, as you said, at your home? Yes, sir. That's correct. I should not have had them at my home. Um, that was that was definitely the issue. Um, they should not have been at, in my home. Commissioner Galvin, um, Mr. Humphrey, how long have you been at the dealership, and what are you doing there currently right now? Uh, I've been at the dealership since uh, approximately mid July. Uh, at the beginning of my time here, I was planning to be a salesman um, and, and, you know, applying for licensure since uh, the denial of my licensure. Um, really, I've just been doing odds and end jobs, um, helping uh, some of the managers out in the sales role, but just um, really what is needed, trying to learn um, the business and hope, you know, in hopes of the possibility of getting a sales license. Uh, 
Okay. Um, if not, what's the pleasure of the uh, commission on uh, Mr. Uh, Humphrey's license? This is Commissioner Fox. I make a motion that we approve his license. Commissioner Melton, I second it. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, uh, we need to call roll, okay? Everything has to have a roll call vote. Thank you, Laura. Uh, okay, the motion is to approve the licensure for Mr. Humphrey. The motion was made by Commissioner Fox and self seconded by Commissioner Melton. Commissioner Levy? Aye. That's aye, Commissioner West. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner White. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Melton. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Lee. No. That's no, Commissioner Barker. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Fox. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Galvin. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Horton. No. That's Commissioner Jackson. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Kramer. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Evans. Aye. I and Chairman Roberts. No. Votes no. Mr. Your uh, application for a license has been approved and we will be in touch with you. Thank you. Thank you very much. For time. Okay, next we've got Scotty Alston. Uh, Ms. Bush, would you like to give us some background? Great, thank you. In the case of Mr. Scotty Austin, the documented conviction is for bribery of a public official on April 15, 2014. From the document received by the commission, it appears that the applicant received a Class E felony and was sentenced to one year of prison and two years of supervised probation on January 5, 2015. This application may be, may be denied under TCA 5517-14 until January 6, 2023. You, uh, Mr. Austin, would you like to uh, address the full commission and talk about uh, your, uh, com you know, your uh, arrest and your uh, the rest of your life and how you're doing? Uh, yes. Uh, first, I'd like to take the opportunity to thank you all for listening to me today and having this meeting. Um, I have worked law enforcement practically all my life. Uh, I have uh, years of law enforcement background. I was uh, currently employed with Federal Bureau of Prisons when, uh, as the charge states, bribery of a government official. I was actually the government official. And I was working at the time, at the present time, I was in food service. Um, just to give you a little bit of an idea, as working in, in food service and supervising inmates, you become, you know, working on the same day-to-day uh, uh, -day, uh, activities and tasks and that sort of thing. And just to be blunt, I became too close to a particular inmate. Um, he approached me. Uh, he had some issues going on he needed, he needed to take care of as uh, far as on the street. But... Uh, I basically sold him tobacco products and a cell and a couple cell and some cell phones. Um, I prior to my conviction, I didn't even have a speeding ticket. Um, uh, I made that mistake. Uh, of course, when asked by the investigator, I told the story, told exactly what happened, accept, accepted full responsibility of my actions, and in return, uh, I was. Uh, uh, convicted and uh, given one year a day of incarceration. Uh, waiting for pretrial on that, I uh, of course resigned from Federal Bureau of Prisons. I accepted uh, employment at Ramey uh, Chevrolet and uh, I worked there for like five and a half months. I've done my incarceration. I came out. <clears throat> I reapplied for a Virginia sales license. They were denied. 
I appealed, they were granted. While I was waiting for the appeal, I applied for a West Virginia sales license because the dealership has dealerships in Virginia and West Virginia, which is just approximately 40 minutes away. Um, West Virginia granted me my uh, West Virginia sales license. I sold at that dealership for approximately three or four months and then Virginia granted me my sales license. Now I've sold cars for approximately six years, no issues. And frankly, I'm, I'm pretty good at it. Um, I average 15, 20 cars a month and I have for six years. Uh, what the reason for applying for a Tennessee sales license is I, when I was, when the, this incident started, I put my house, I leased my house out in Tennessee. I, were li I was living in uh, Kingsport, Tennessee at the time. So I leased my house in order to keep it. Well, now it's came, it's came up an opportunity and it's, it's agitated for me to actually move back to my house. So in order to do that, I need to see employment in Tennessee, which, you know, that's what I'm doing. And I, I wish to move my family back into my home and finish out what years I have left. <laughs> All right. Um, everybody with you? Uh, yes, sir, I do. I have a representative from Friendship uh, with me. Is that, is that person? Hello. Okay. My name is Charles Reynolds. I'm financial manager here at Friendship Hyundai and Volvo. Oh. Oh. And okay. Alana Wilson, our agent director, is also with us. Okay. Tell us you know about Mr. Austin and uh, in his employment and his performance? Okay. Um, I worked at Ranch Chevrolet. He was initially hired, so I worked with him up there for about three years total. Um, I've known him ever since, kept in touch. Uh, I came to Friendship about two years ago. So the, the entire time that I've known Scott, um, I've always found him to be honest and up. Uh, we've, you know, a lot of salespeople just do a lot of different things, but I've always found that Scott is honest with, with his customers. He's honest with management. And you know, in all honesty, I don't think you can find a better person. I think he would be a, a great in their team here. Well, thank you. Um, anybody from the commission got any questions at this point? Mr. Norton, I've got a question, um, Scotty. So it just says here that you so you were charged for bringing tobacco products and cellular phones into the prison, and you you alluded to the fact that it was just a one-time scenario, one individual. Is that true, or is, did you have an ongoing business? No, it was like ongoing. It was with one one inmate, and it was on. It wasn't one instance. It was three. You know, it was a couple of instances. Yes the same person yes yes same okay. same yes yeah the questions commissioners what's your uh thoughts on this one do we have a motion Parker, motion we approve Second. Oh, okay. Commissioner Galvin. And Executive Director uh, Lawrence, will you call the roll for the vote? Yeah. Yes, sir. We have a motion to approve licensure for Mr. Alston. Motion was made by Commissioner Barker and seconded by Commissioner Galvin. Commissioner Levy. Aye. Aye, Commissioner West. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner White. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Melton. Commissioner Melton. That's aye, Commissioner Lee. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Barker. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Fox. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Galvin. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Norton. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Jackson. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Kramer. Aye. 
Evans, aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Aye. And Chairman Roberts? Aye. That's aye. Mr. Chairman, we have unanimous approval of Mr. Austin's licensure. Thank you. And uh, we can move on now to the next uh, application. It's for a dealer's license. Uh, Mario Mitchell. And uh, I'll ask uh, Ms. Bush if she'll uh, update us. Thank you, Chairman. In the case of Mr. Mario Mitchell, the documented conviction is for aggravated stalking on June 19, 2014. From the documents received by the commission, it appears that the applicant received a Class B felony on January 18, 2018, and was sentenced to three years of supervised probation. This application may be denied under TCA 5517.14 until January 18, 2027. Um, the commission should be aware that Mr. Mitchell came before you all in April 2020 to appeal his salesperson's licensure denial. So you all have deliberated and questioned Mr. Mitchell on this conviction as it relates to his fitness to hold a salesperson's license. Today, Mr. Mitchell is requesting that you all grant him a dealership license and because there are different responsibilities and um, facets of holding a dealership license that is why um, he is here before you today. Um, just a little bit of history, Mr. Mitchell was disciplined for operating a motor vehicle dealership under an expired dealer's license. He entered into an agreed order with the commission on April 7th, 2017, that his self person's license was revoked uh, for failure to make timely payments on his civil penalty on November 30th, 2017. And um, since he now has his salesperson's license reinstated, Mr. Mitchell has paid the remaining amount of the civil penalty. Um, and the agreed order that was entered into in 2017 was a result of three different complaints before the commission. Um, so that is all. Okay. Um, any questions? Uh, Commission members, if y'all would like to um, uh, ask Mr. Mitchell some questions, please do so at this time. Any questions for Mr. For Mr. Mitchell? Mr. Mitchell, did you bring anybody with you today? Yes, I brought yes, I brought in uh David Jones, someone who has known me for a long time and is going to if if you guys see fit to grant me the dealership uh license, he's gonna be a part of it. Okay, can we hear from him at this time? Sure. Hello, how are you today? Hello. Glad you're here. Uh will you want to address the commission? I'm sorry, I, I, will you repeat that, please? I said, would you like to address the commission at this time? Yes, yeah, certainly. I, I didn't know if you had any specific questions you want to ask. But may have that after you speak, but but right now, just tell us about yourself and, and your uh, knowledge of Mr. Mitchell and things of that sort. My name is David Jones. I, I've sold automobiles for years here in town. I worked at Crest Cadillac for years. Uh, Hanson Chrysler for years. Of course, you guys are probably familiar with those names, Michael Kissmiller and so on and so forth. But I've been knowing Mario Mitchell for over 20 years. You know, uh, he's actually from North Nashville, which happened to be one of the highest incarceration or percentages of black men in this country. And he has, against all odds, uh, rose to every level that he needed to to overcome this oppressive situation that's out here. Uh, he has uh, consistently uh, been confronted with uh, charges that have been trumped up on him from his, his wife. And of course, he's resolved all of those uh, to the point that he's even gotten his children uh, custody back. And uh, he is trying to get 
hold to his life and go forward. And uh, right now, he just simply needs an opportunity to express potential. And uh, I'm hoping uh, that you guys will consider the situation he's in here and allow him to do that. Okay. Okay, at this time, is uh, any commissioner members, uh, commissioners want to comment or ask questions? Mr. Commissioner Fox, uh, Mr. Mitchell, where is your facility? Do you have a facility already set up to sell cars? Yes, yes, sir. It's located in the Metro Center area on, on Clarksville Pike. And since you've been before the commission before, can you elaborate on some of the charges that was against you, like the aggravated assault and, and, and evading arrest? You may have told us that last time, but I don't remember. Evading arrest. Um, those, yeah, those were the 1990, uh, 1998 or 1999. Um, I was 18 and 19 years old at the time. Can you get a little bit further on that? Oh, yes, yes. The, uh, the evading arrest was, well, actually, the evading arrest came after the, the aggravated assault. I had an altercation with a former acquaintance. Uh, we had a big, a big falling out, and uh, he pressed charges against me. And I, next day or two, I can't remember, but um, I think the cops came to serve me a warrant. And, um, and I tried to run. I think that was back in either 1998 or 1999. And um, just for the commissioner's reference on this application, I listed on the memorandum all of the um, convictions that I received in the office. However, as you all know, there's a timeline that we have to work with under our um, statute, statute, and that's um, for five years from the legislative release, probation, um, or imprisonment. And so the only um conviction that the commission has discretion to deny under is the aggravated stalking so um, it might be helpful to limit the questioning to that just because there would be no discretion for the other um four convictions that are listed i'm sorry if that's confusing i just try to list all the information we we receive so that there's full um knowledge there of background but as far as being able to deny, um, it would only be under the stalking charge. Well, Commissioner North, if you would then tell us when, when was the aggravated, aggravated stalking and tell us a little about what happened there. Okay, no problem. The incident in question occurred um, June of 2014. Um, and um, February of 2013, we, I filed for divorce, and at the time uh, of filing for the divorce, I was a, uh, a licensed dealer here in Nashville. And uh, so my wife and I went through a real contentious divorce. She went to jail. I went to jail. We had accusations. <laughs> we had accusations against each other. Uh, we lived in. I bought another home in the same relative neighborhood. We worked on the same street. So her uh, job was literally on the same street as my job. And so we had a very contentious issue over kids and money. And um, so there was a lot of allegations that went between the two of us. And um, I went to trial and I was found not guilty on the stalking charge. And, um, and there was some other uh, order protection violations out there. And so in 2017, um i took a plea to get everything my ex-wife and myself we were divorced at the time we both decided to come to an agreement to put all of these these accusations custody everything behind and i turned around and then play it again to an offense that i had already found not guilty at trial since then uh order protection has expired i now have custody of my kids um i was blessed that you guys gave me an opportunity to get my salesman license back in the spring. I uh, took out a second mortgage on three properties to uh, line myself, get myself back in position to open up 
another dealership. Uh, I really, uh, I've got a 10 year lease on, on property and then I was denied. And so, uh, kind of just in, in limbo, hanging out there, praying that I get this opportunity to move forward so I can continue, uh, on the that I'm on now. Okay. Any other uh, questions? Commissioner Jackson, this is to the staff. Uh, has he met? Uh, all the requirements to open a new dealership, has he met all those requirements? He had Commissioner Jackson. Okay. And Maria, I was, uh, if you could, if you could remind us about the uh, consent orders and the payment. Yes, yeah, those were satisfied back in April whenever his salesperson's license was um, reinstated. Uh, Commission Jackson again, uh, just to mention, uh, yeah. you know, the stalking part, I mean, what, what were you doing? Were you calling your ex on the phone or were you going by the house? Just just share that with us. Okay, I don't have a problem. Actually, neither one of them, neither one of those are true. So what happened is in 2013, uh, I filed for divorce and then the judge, Judge Phyllis Smith granted me full custody of the kids. Um, 30 minutes after that, my ex-wife went to the next court, went to the night court and said, oh, he hit me two weeks ago. And so we fought in court for years over the kids. And so uh, there was an order of protection that was entered between for both of us. However, from 2013 all the way into 2014, my ex-wife and I were still on again, off again relationship. Well, when we decided, well, when the divorce wasn't going the way we both decided to go, and then I was held, she uh, um, filed a, a several contempt of courts, order of protection violation, Showing that there had been 2,000 phone calls between the both of us and about an equal amount of text messages, mutual. So that led me into a position where I had explained to the judge, yes, I did communicate, but she spent the night in my house and here are pictures and these, that, this, that, and the other. The stalking allegation came, um, uh, ironically, two days prior to trial for my custody hearing of the kids. And so she made a claim that I follow her work, but I just want to reemphasize that we literally work, work on the same street within two blocks of each other. And so I just felt like it was a ploy to have me arrested and be in jail when it was time to go to trial for the kids, kids which is what happened. And I lost custody of the kids at that point. However, after going to trial on the stalking charge and was found not guilty, I was granted the kids back. Uh, this is for the staff, Commissioner Jackson again. Is there any documentation that you, well, let me go back to uh, Mr. Mitchell. Did you provide that information uh, to the motor vehicle when you requested for your dealer license that that case has been uh, dismissed? Okay, so yes, but what happens is the order of protection was out of circuit court, which is the court that was handling the uh, divorce. And so initially we went in front of that, in front of Judge Philip Smith. We had trial. I was found not guilty. My ex-wife then in turn went to the very next day, went to criminal court to have the same charges um, applied against me. And I did provide that information to the, um, the Motor Vehicle Commission. I emailed it over and they have copies. And I also have a copy. If, I, if you guys want me to upload it, I, could, I can do it here. I was prepared for it. Um, and so I just got tired of fighting after five years. I was missing time with my kids. And um, I just decided to. <laughs> Mr. Uh, Commissioner Jackson, again, I, I quit after this one. Uh, to the staff, he said he emailed that information to the to the motor vehicle, 
reference to the charge that dismissed on the stalking, do, do, do the staff have that such information? Commissioner Jackson, this is Maria Bush with legal. I've reviewed Mr. Mitchell's file. Um, he is referring to the civil court found him dismissed the stalking charges. However, there is a uh, document that evidences is a 2018 uh, criminal getting some feedback. Um, but anyhow, there is a documented criminal conviction it's a valid conviction, and so I'm obligated to present that information to you all. That 2018 conviction for the stalking charge, um, it's, it's effective of this time, um, so it, that has not been dismissed, and I'm obligated to report that to you all. Um, however, Mr. Mitchell is correct in that, you know, this occurred, the occurrence of the crime was in 2014. However, um, things get drawn out sometimes in the system and the actual conviction did not occur until 2018. Thank you. Uh, this is Commissioner Levy. Just a question to the staff. Have there been any complaints or issues uh, with Mr. Mitchell since uh, the, re the granting of his license in the spring or dealership that he works at? None about which I'm aware. I make a motion that we have. Second. Second. I don't know what's going on here. Any technical people? Mr. Roberts, it seems to be you for some reason. I don't know if you adjusted your volume, maybe, or something. Okay, I don't think I did. It's like I'm saying over and over and over. This, this commission, Jack. Uh, this commission Jackson did I heard a motion for uh, Commission Levy, but I didn't hear what the motion was. I make a motion that we approve the license. Uh, commission Jackson, I second. Discussion. Do the roll call vote. Executive Director Lawrence. Mr. Chairman, you have a motion for approval of Mr. Mitchell's licensure. Made the motion made by Commissioner Levy and seconded by Commissioner Jackson. Commissioner Levy, aye. Commissioner West, aye. Aye. Commissioner White, aye. Aye. Commissioner Melton, aye. Votes aye, Commissioner Lee. Aye. Votes aye, Commissioner Barker. Aye. Votes aye, Commissioner Fox. Aye. Votes aye, Commissioner Galvin. Aye. Votes aye, Commissioner Norton. Aye. Votes aye, Commissioner Jackson. Aye. Votes aye, Commissioner Cram. Aye. Uh. Aye, Commissioner Evans. Aye. Aye, and Chairman Roberts. Aye. 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 That's aye. Mr. Chairman, you have unanimous approval uh, to grant Mr. Mitchell's licensure. Thank you. Uh, before you give your director's report, can I try to fix this and sign off and get back on? We'll just wait here for you. If you'll go ahead and sign off and try to right. sign back in, uh, okay. we'll keep keep everything running in terms of the recording. Thank you. 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 Does that sound right, Laura? Yes, ma'am. That'll be fine. Thank you. Uh, this commission, Jackson, uh, 
Director Lawrence, I think Mr. Mitchell is waiting on in your normal comment. Oh, in terms of the licensure, everything will yes, be sir. processed yes, and it will be sent to you um, as quickly as we can get to it and as the people that print them get them printed. But what we'll do in the interim is send you a copy of it electronically. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. You're welcome. Okay, is it is it more normal? Yes, very good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good. Okay. Uh, would you like to give your director's report at this time? Sir, I believe the director's report uh, was included in your materials, and I just wanted to point out a few things. We are really doing extremely well in terms of new dealerships open as well as salesman applications. We are on track uh, right now to surpass the total number of vehicles that were sold in 2019. I find this especially encouraging since we're um, in the midst of the COVID-19 crisis. Our people have adapted to working from home and we have so much so that we have a 90% um, online adoption rate and typically we oscillate between 97 and 100 percent approval uh, rating. That's uh, uh, very encouraging to me. I want to make sure that all our licensees know that they can reach out to us and that we will be responsive. So I'm encouraged to know that. Um, outreach has not been as uh, uh, aggressive as I want it to be. Um, I hope that we will be able to start conducting some things in person as as we go through the rest of this health care crisis and hopefully we will get to some resolution of that soon. But uh, that is about all I had. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you. And uh, I guess next on the agenda is uh, legal report, uh, Assistant General Counsel's, uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, I, I just want to be a stickler. Can we go ahead and have a motion on the director's oh, yes. report and adoption? Absolutely. Commission Jackson, motion to adopt the director's report. Do we have a second? Commissioner so Melton, seconds it. Any further okay, discussion? We have a motion to adopt. We have a motion to adopt the director's report made by Commissioner Jack Jackson and seconded by Commissioner Melton. Commissioner Levy. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner White. Commissioner Aye, Melton. Sorry. Commissioner Melton. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Commissioner Barker. Aye. Commissioner Fox. Aye. Commissioner Galvin. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Commissioner Jackson. Aye. Commissioner? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. Commissioner Chairman? Aye. We have a unanimous vote on the director's report and it is adopted. Thank you. 
Um, next is the legal report uh, by Assistant General Counsels Erica Smith and Stuart Huffman. Thank you. Let's see, I'm just going to pull my notes up real quick. Hey, Erica, if you don't mind, in the um, in the uh, legal review committee earlier, uh, you know, as the maker of the motion to set this matter for a hearing on the merits pending the commission approval, I would move to delay our discussion until the next motor vehicle commission meeting. Uh, statements were made that we need to take certain actions first. I want to make sure all the commission members understand what the process requires before we take action on the original motion. And that was on case 151. Stuart, do you have any concern or anything? So what now? I just wanted to make sure Stuart didn't have any comments on that one. Okay. No, if they want to. Uh... This later, that's fine. You need a second. I'll second, Commissioner Lea. Any further discussion? If that requires a second, I don't know. I think it does. I think we should have a roll call. Yes. Yes. And then we need a roll call. Okay. This specific motion is to discuss item 151 at a future date at a future meeting, and I'm sorry, the motion was made by Chairman Robert, seconded by? Charles West. West. Specifically, uh, direct to uh, Sorry, at, I will clarify at the, le at the next, next quarterly meeting. meeting. Yes. Everyone understand Roberts, the motion. I have a question, Chairman Roberts. I mean, will will the will the full commission get the the same narrative that we received on the legal review? Yes. Okay. okay. Proceed to call the vote. Does everyone understand the motion? Okay, Commissioner Levy. Aye. Commissioner West. Aye. Aye, Commissioner White. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Melton. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Lee. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Barker. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Fox. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Galvin. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Norton. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Jackson. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Cramer. Uh. That's aye, Commissioner Evans. Aye. And Chairman Roberts. Aye. The motion carries so that the discussion of item number 151 will be taken up at our next quarterly meeting. Okay, I think this just makes it neater for us to uh, be able to adopt the legal uh, case report. So we get this out of the way and it's back to uh, Erica and Stuart at this time. Thank you, Chairman. Um, so as far as the legal report uh, goes, we have a few changes. Number five, um, we will be sending a letter of explanation to the County Clerks Association regarding how many vehicles you can sell with, without a license. And also, we'll be doing further investigation um, into whether or not the respondent has sold more than five vehicles in the calendar year. And if so, we will issue a $500 civil penalty against the respondent. If not, we will issue a letter of warning. Number six, there was a question about whether Mississippi branded titles, and I was able to look that up um, since we, we talked about that in the review, and they changed the law that, and that law became effective July 1st, 2018, to where they do brand titles now. 
<clears throat> now this title was prior to that. So with that information, is there any more discussion or do we do we want to close this? Let's say close it. I agree, Commissioner Jackson. I agree. Okay. So so number six will be closed. Number 45, we're going to do an inspection um, on the respondent. Number 52, we would like to send this to the rules committee for discussion, but there is no change to the recommendation that, that will still be closed. Number 77, we will be discussing this with the Department of Revenue regarding uh, failure to pay sales tax by the respondent. Number 96, we will be having a discussion with the respondent um, about the issues going on. Number 103, we are issuing a $500 uh, civil penalty for advertising violations um, and reviewing for current violations. Number 106, there will be language in the offer that the respondent must be licensed um, or they can, they can be issued higher civil penalties in the future per violation. Number 126 will issue a $1,000 civil penalty. This also brought up something that will lead to a discussion about injunctions against dealers uh, that continue to curb stone and that discussion will need to be had with the attorney general's office. Number 150, we will additionally be flagging the salesperson's license. And as we just discussed, number 151 will be discussed at the next quarterly board meeting. And that that is all. Okay, what's your, uh, what's the commission's pleasure on adopting the uh, legislative update? Uh, Commissioner Jackson, uh, make a motion that we adopt the legal report uh, as been presented. Do we have a second? Commissioner Fox, I'll second. Any further discussion? Uh, Executive Director Lawrence, if you'll call the roll. The motion is on adoption of the legal report as amended. Commissioner Levy. Aye. It's aye, Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner White. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Melton. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Lee. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Barker. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Fox. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Galvin. Aye. Aye, Commissioner Norton. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Jackson. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Kramer. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Evans. Aye. That's aye, and Chairman Roberts. Aye. That's aye. Mr. Chairman, the legal report amended is adopted unanimously. Thank you very much, Executive Director Lawrence. Uh, next, uh, committee reports, uh, audit committee and rules committee, there's no report. So we can uh, now move to uh, new business. And would you like to present that? The Motor Vehicle Commission meeting dates, you or Jason? I'm looking for my paper, so I thought I had everything in order. Aha! Here are the motor vehicle proposed meeting dates for 2021. The quarterly meetings would be held January 19 to 20, April 20 to 21, July 20 to 21, and October 19 to 20 in 2021. Committee meetings would be scheduled for February 9th, the 18th, August 10th, November 16th, and then any formal hearings would be held February 10th, May 19th, June 22nd, August 11, September 21, or November 17. 
Very good. Do we need to adopt, uh, get a uh, approval for those dates? We do. If we could have a motion and a second. Commissioner Jackson motion that we adopt the proposal with motor vehicle meeting dates. Commissioner Fox second that. Any further motion discussion? Just a question to the board. Does this board anticipate we will be conducting these digitally for the next 12 months, if you were to guess? If I guess, I would say that that they will strongly encourage us to meet digitally. I'm not sure how that will play out in terms of formal hearings, whether or not we have formal hearings um, that that those may or may not be encouraged to be handled electronically. Basically, I don't know is the answer. My guess is we're going to likely continue to meet electronically for the foreseeable future. Okay. Um, do we vote on those dates already? We did not vote. We could go ahead and vote on them. I think that would be the cleanest way to do it. Sure. The motion made by Commissioner Jackson and seconded by Commissioner Fox on the adoption of the meeting dates as read by the executive director. Commissioner Levy. I believe we have had to step out for a moment. Commissioner West. Uh, aye. Votes aye. Commissioner White. Aye. Melton. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Barker. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Fox. Aye. Aye. Commissioner Galvin. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. Votes aye. Commissioner Jackson. Aye. That's I, Commissioner Kramer. Aye. That's I, Commissioner Evans. Aye. Aye, and Chairman Roberts. Aye. That's I. Mr. Chairman, the uh, proposed meeting date, meeting schedule for 2021 has been adopted. Thank you very much. Um, would you like to present the agreed citation schedule? I can do so. Or uh, I think it might be easier for Stuart to go over some of these to point out some of the things that we changed. And uh, if everyone will get that schedule in front of you. And as Jason said, I think we're going to be posting this to the website. So, um, Stuart, do you want to go over some of the changes that we made? Uh, sure. Um, what our goal here is to um, stay consistent with what we've been doing in the past. Uh, I've gone through some uh, previous uh, legal reports and, and uh, discussions and also the decisions. And so I've tried to keep it as consistent as possible. And um, what we're wanting to do is get this approved by the commission so that we can stay on this schedule when we have uh, future disciplinary actions. Um, some of the things that we are seeing um, and also wanting to, I guess, be a little bit more concerned about are um, dealers that are issuing issuing uh, temporary tags on salvage vehicles. Um, the the issue is not the actual selling of the salvage vehicle because the dealer can actually sell a salvage vehicle. The issue is that. They're allowing that vehicle to go on the road and leave the lot. Um, it's okay for them to sell the salvage vehicle, keep it on the lot until they receive that rebuilt title. But they're not doing that. We're seeing a lot of violations where the dealers are selling and putting temporary tags on them and uh, allowing them to leave the lot. So we're, we're wanting to um, have a stricter penalty on these violations. And so you'll see that that is uh, 
155, 17, 114B1K. It kind of falls under the false, fraudulent, deceptive. Uh, sells the salvage vehicles before rebuilt title issued and includes a temp tag issued. So you're wanting to be stricter on those penalties. Uh, and that penalty is also issued per vehicle sold and per temp tag issued. There are not many other changes to uh, the past schedule, um, but we were just trying to clean it up a little bit with uh, the tent tag issue because now that we have e tag, easy tag, we uh, are not seeing a lot of the title log uh, violations since those were done by hand. Those really the only changes. What we'd like to do is get the commission to agree uh, to the schedule. And then also um, our centralized complaint department where the complaints come in. Whenever we have a notice of violation, they will send out, um, uh, I think the, ad, the administration used to do this, but now our centralized the plate area is now sending out agreed citations to these dealers uh, and going ahead and handling that disciplinary action. And they would like to have something that's set so that they could continue to do so. And that will uh, alleviate some of these complaints coming to legal. And uh, the dealers will go ahead and just agree to their citation and, and um, we can close those out. That's all I have on that. Okay. Is the commission uh, comfortable with these changes and are you ready to adopt them today or do you want uh, or should we uh, get a copy of it and have it in front of us before we vote? Whatever your pleasure is. This is Commissioner Lee. I would uh, make a motion that we go ahead and approve the citation schedule. Okay. Do we have a second? Commissioner Melton, I second it. Any further discussion? Executive Director Lawrence, if you'll call the roll for the vote. The motion made by Commissioner Lee to adopt the citation schedule as presented by our attorney Stuart Huffman, seconded by Commissioner Melton. Commissioner Levy. Oh, I'm sorry. Commissioner Levy had to step out. Commissioner West? Aye. Commissioner White? Aye. Aye. Commissioner Melton? Aye. Both aye. Commissioner Lee? Aye. Both aye. Commissioner Barker? Aye. Both aye. Commissioner Fox? Aye. Both Commissioner Galvin? Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Norton. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Jackson. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Kramer. Aye. That's aye, Commissioner Evans. Aye. That's aye, and Chairman Roberts. Aye. Votes aye. The agreed citation schedule is adopted unanimously. Okay, next on the agenda is old business. There's nothing on old business. And uh, I know this is uh, new rules that we have to do with being a video cam, but we need a motion to adjourn and formally vote. Motion to adjourn, Commissioner Norton. Second. Commissioner Belton, second. Uh, any further discussion on the adjournment? If not, please call the roll to adjourn made by Commissioner Norton, seconded by Commissioner Melton. Commissioner Levy, Saints, Commissioner West. Aye. Commissioner White. Aye. Commissioner Melton. Aye. Commissioner Lee. Aye. Commissioner Barker. Aye. Commissioner Fox. Aye. Commissioner Galvin. Aye. Commissioner Norton. Aye. 
Commissioner Jackson? Aye. Commissioner Kramer? Aye. Commissioner Evans? Aye. And Chairman Roberts? Aye. Mr. Chairman, the motion to adjourn is unanimous. Okay, we'll see you at the next quarterly meeting, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everybody.